following is presented by CrewRoundTable.com Podcast Network. Welcome to Crew Roundtable Bites. Food for your mind. Recorded live to tape. No edits. Real, raw, and reasonable. This is Crew Roundtable Bites. Welcome, friends, to episode three of Crew Roundtable Bites, the summer hiatus show for CrewRoundtable.com. We're here to bring you some discussions on some smaller topics. Uh, We're not going to take the full hour that we usually do on the main show of Crew Roundtable, uh, but we're using a few less voices, but we're still giving you top-notch content. My name is Gino, and I'm joined by... JR, as always. And today we are going to be discussing the engineer that was fired from Google, James Damore, for his memo that was leaked about diversity. Um, JR, I would like you please to go into the memo in detail, Um, but it is more than a memo. It's more of a manifesto. It's a pretty long, well thought out, uh, written memo with uh, summaries <laughs> as part of the memo going down. So this person didn't just fire off something in the in the heat of the moment. There was thought put behind this. So we are getting a really good glimpse into what this person actually thinks, um, which will come into our discussion of uh, our, our, our main question driving this is, should this person, should James Damore have been fired by Google for the content of this memo? Uh, now, when I was doing my prep for the show, Normally, I try to go to the source documents, but this document is somewhat long. As I said, it's more of a manifesto. It's not a memo. Um, So I I found it really hard to kind of go through the memo and give it the due that it it needed. So what I've done is for this one, uh, uh, for for this topic, I went through and I started looking at some business websites. Um, Google is a tremendously powerful and influential business throughout the entire globe and I find that the business websites they do a good job of keeping their editorializing to a minimum um, and they just give you the brass tacks because all they care about is how is this going to affect profit going forward so here's a quick introduction uh, and then uh, I'll throw it over to JR and he can take you through the memo in greater detail so what happened Uh, Google fired an engineer after he sent an internal memo to co-workers challenging some of the tech giant's diversity efforts. Well, he sent it to every co-worker in the entire company. Yes, so it was sent out on a internal message board system that they have, and apparently they've got, they've got a whole bunch of these at Google. Um, Google Plus essentially was an internal, it was supposed to be populated by internal users, mm-hmm. and then it was rolled out to people. And they have a bunch of these internal message boards, but he sent it out to one um, that is meant to go out to the whole company. Yeah, it's like, it's like, I think we all have like emails, email systems at work and there are short form emails that represent, you know, entire divisions and si- entire departments. And there is, there's always one email that represents every single employee at the company. And I know those are generally verboten, forbidden to be used. Yes. So this is not a this is not a question of you know he hit reply all by accident or something like that. This was done with the intention of stimulating discussion and debate at Google. This was meant for everyone in Google to read. Yes. Okay. Uh, also, I should mention the summary that I'm reading. It comes from CNBC.com. The title of the article is "Here's Why Google Had the Right to Fire That Employee Over His Diversity Memo." Uh, point number two. Uh, There were parts of the memo that were protected by law, such as the right to communicate with fellow employees about working conditions, um, because within the memo, he did challenge some of Google's hiring practices enforcing diversity. But, and here's point number three, Google had a very specific reason for his termination. Part of what he said in the memo, according to the top brass at Google, could be interpreted as sexual harassment, that violated Google's code of conduct. That is the official reason why he was let go from his job as an engineer at Google. JR, take us into the memo. Okay, I, I, I read through this memo, and basically he starts off saying he's not racist, and he doesn't believe, and he's not denying that sexism exists. 
He's essentially against forced uh, diversification, kind of giving preference to some candidates <laughs> in order to add gender diversity and cultural diversity to the workforce. But then he very quickly makes it a male ver- men versus fe- men versus women uh, argument. Uh, there, he starts there, it. He starts. That's his first point. He well, he, start, he starts. He starts on on talking about diversity in general, but it very quickly becomes men are like this and women are like this, and the crux the crux of his argument is that men are suited for certain jobs, women are suited for others, and the reason that Google was at one point ninety five percent male in most of the engineering jobs in his opinion, was simply because men are better suited for this job and that was just a natural evolution of that process, that men were better suited, therefore they were better candidates, therefore they were preferentially hired, therefore they get more money. That was his opinion. That's that's essentially a very light, um, uh, it's a very high level summary of the memo. There's, there's there's a lot of unfortunately he uses a lot of ridiculous science uh, saying women are um, it, it just it's just a quote from the uh, the memo I'm trying to uh, um, let, me, let me pull up a little piece of uh, and differences between men and women and the um, memo is footnoted <laughs> so it was footnoted but it didn't cite sources no but it was I basically mean... it's like his research was basically from an MRA website. Uh, which which is, it's a short form for men's rights activists, which are groups of men who feel that they interpret a rebalancing of, of equality as, as as an attack. Unfortunately, I think that's a misconception. Imagine this as a seesaw, where if you have all the power, you're up on top, you're the seat at the top. But when you balance, when you when opportunities are balanced. You have to give up. You have to come down so the other person on the seesaw can come up. So yes, you are losing something. You know, there are fewer men are not being given the jobs. Men are getting getting fewer because they have everything. It, 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 you know, when 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 guys occupy ninety five percent of the engineering positions, you know, when when people quit or they get or they get terminated and their pl- places are replaced with people who aren't white men. Who aren't men at all, or who are women? Yes, there's a shift in power, and you can interpret that as, you know, we're, lo- we're we, yeah, they're, they're, you're being pared back. You're, you're, what you have is being taken away from you. But that's not discrimination. I'm sorry, you, you, you're not being discriminated against because you are the only pool from which to draw these positions from. Whatever you have, and it's being redistributed. If you have everything, of course, it's going to only be taken from you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, am, I, am, I, am I being clear here? So, in the memo itself, um, what do you think is the, just simply the most damning part of the memo? Oh, oh, okay, the da- okay, the most damning part of the memo. Give us, give us the most, give us the headline. Okay, um, I think the worst part of the memo is his. And while uh, you're and while you're going through that, this is part of the reason why I went to started going to the business websites because if you just tried to. Ironically, Google. Why this person was fired from Google? Um, the, the the big hits were all uh, editorialized pieces. So let's get something straight from the horse's mouth. Jr. Take he us feel, to the most damning piece. He feels conservatives, and I, I think he also thinks men. At the same time, white men are being diver- are are being uh, targeted because I guess their numbers are being decreased. Sorry, but that's are you, just a mathematical thing. But no, are you is, reading something? Are you quoting directly from no, the No, no. This is, this, now I'm going to quote it. Okay, you. go ahead. Yes. It says, stop alienating conservatives. Viewpoint diversity is argument, arguably the most important type of diversity. So we shouldn't be looking at hiring more women and more minorities. We should be getting more conservatives. I think that's ridiculous. Um that's because by bringing in people who are different, you still bring in different viewpoints. 
Wait a second. Is this the part that you think is the worst, or is that the reason why you think he was fired? Because I don't think no, that no, has no, anything no, to do no. with him why, being this fired. Is, no, this is why. This is why I, I concern. This is why I, I, I just don't like this memo. This is why you just don't. Like, so this is of, your hot button on the memo. This is primary hot button. Gotcha. There's, there's a lot of fallacies in this memo, as I've described. He uh, he doesn't say it, but you can clearly see that he is he is going on the assumption that. The whole industry has not been biased, and that the fact that the majority of engineering positions and the majority of uh, executive positions being men is simply a natural order of men being different than women. That's his opinion. He completely doesn't take into the fact that women are specifically discriminated against in STEM fields across the board. And I'm not making a generalization. I, I've gone to school with women. In you are the STEM field. I'm an, I am an engineer. Uh, my in, at U of T, uh, chemical engineering. I went to chemical engineering. U of T being University of Toronto. Uh, I, they have different engineering fields. Chemical engineering is always held as kind of a jewel of engineering because it has almost fifty percent enrollment of women. Just naturally, it's not. It's we're not talking as selectively. Okay? It just happens that it has a 50% enrollment of, uh, it's almost equal men and women in a field. And then it becomes, uh, then all the other ones are skewed a lot more towards men. Sorry, that's the field? That's not just the class at U of T? Uh, it's, I don't know if it's a field. It's, it's not, it's, it's, it's a class. Sorry, I'm using the wrong term. It's, okay, it's, sorry. It's a class. The en- engineering program. Sorry, it's the program. Okay. Eng- the, the chemical engineering program at U of T is, ni- is nearly equally balanced. All right? And... Um, and one can say, and 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 and, and it skews uh, differently in other in other fields. And one could say, well, that's just because men are better at that. But you, you, what you don't understand is how women are treated during their whole life. Uh, they're you know never they, up until up until recent years, they've never been encouraged to do well at math. They, they, they've never been even encouraged to go into the sciences. As a man, I've never been told just look pretty. And get yourself a rich husband. Where women have been told that for years. They, you know, you don't have to work hard. Just be pretty and marry rich and you'll be fine. Well, when and, they had no option to get a job, then pretty much that was your survival strategy. True, but even but it's still it's still been a lingering encouragement for a long time. It's, it's only recently that, that's, that that kind of an attitude has been... Oh, I'm not defending it. No, no, okay. I'm, I'm okay. saying when you have no option to go out and get... A job. I mean, forget about even having a good job. At yeah. some point, they were discriminated against just from even working, so, wearing pants. Uh, yeah. On top of it, so he seems to think that it almost sounds like Google's just randomly picking women off the street and putting them in chairs and calling them engineers and and, and giving them a, 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 as if these women have not earned the position. You know, they may or may not have been first choice, but re- when you're doing hiring, there is no direct hierarchy of candidates. Uh, if you if you pick up a, a large enough pool of candidates, you'll have a collection of really good top end candidates, right? There's not it's not going to be that one person started glowing like the son of God, and everyone else fell by the wayside. You know, if you if you only have twenty candidates, sure that could happen. But if Google pro, Google is one of the biggest hiring, it probably attracts a, a number of uh, 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 of candidates. You know, to say that the the hiring at Google until that was not was unbiased is is ridiculous. Everyone has a bias. You know, maybe some of these people were actually a little racist. Maybe they weren't consciously racist. You know, if they saw someone with a you know black sounding name, Jamal Jackson for a, maybe they didn't look twice at their at their at, at their uh, at their application, and it's something no one would ever see and no one would ever be able to track. So to, say, to assume that there is a completely unbiased hiring process is wrong. Because if there was an unbiased hiring process, we wouldn't have 95% men. Uh, we wouldn't have had such a high percentage of men that they had to enact a diversity program to, to, to pare that down. So, and, and, and a lot of people use it, and, you know, and, and a lot of men's rights activists explain that it's not, it's not discrimination, we're just simply the best. And it's clearly expressed in the hiring practices, which is laughable at best and a lie at worst. You know, it's just an, an excuse to uh, to cover up discrimination. 
And so, yes, to in, in, you know, in trying to diversify, there is a certain level of discrimination because you're picking people who who, who are in a minority. But that's because you're, you're you're kind of discriminating because as 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 a way to reverse a chain of discrimination. So, uh, you know, you I can see they they feel disaffected because they're the ones being because white people are being white men are being discriminated against. I feel you're drifting off. Yeah, I kind of am. Sorry. Yeah, I need you. Um, I need you to reel it back to the memo because you're so, you're yeah. an expert on the memo. So you're going through it, and and it, it basically it's very one sided. He doesn't take into account anybody else's perspective. All he sees is, well, that Google is hiring less white men, and and conservatives can't say anything about it. I feel discriminated against, you know, where he's only seeing a very did, did small microcosm. Conf- That's basically what he's saying. No, but did he conflate conservative and white together? Uh, he, yeah, basically. Uh, he wasn't saying white. He was saying conservative. Conservative, okay. It, it became it became a conservative versus versus liberal and a men versus women thing. So you think that conservative might be code for white? Yes, male. I I I, th- I feel it is. So you think there's a. Yes. So in your reading of the memo, you feel that there's a general, like a palpable subtext. Yes, to the usually, memo. usually when when people when companies undergo diversification scenarios, it's because there's too many white men. It's it's just the default problem is there's too many white men, and they need to diversify that. It's never been a problem that they've had too many black people in an executive position. That's never happened, unless unless the company is exclusively owned by a person of color, but. You know, as it is, the large executive firms are generally white, and 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 unfortunately, and, and their and their hiring practices generally tend to white. Now, maybe they're you know, and if, if they're only getting white candidates, there's that's because there's systemic problems in the education system and in the uh, in the enforcement in the encouragement system leading up to that, ultimately leading up to applying to the job, that pushes people of color and pushes people white women, uh, sorry, not white women, women in general, away from even trying for the positions. There's systemic issues throughout society that cause problems. So to say that, oh, this, this last, this last uh, bias is wrong, igno- ignoring the chain of biases that has caused the, 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 the real, the, the very lopsided percentages in the office is short-sighted. And there are some, I mean, the way that he said it, incorrect, but there are some real biological concerns and hurdles that women have to overcome to get to positions higher up that ladder and be in power. The number one, especially in Canada, being pregnancy. If yes, you're on that, a career... It's a challenge. It's not a, it doesn't make them incapable, no, that's, which is no. what he is saying. And, and that's where some of the confusion might be because... Especially in Canada, we're very fortunate that women here are afforded the luxury of taking a year away from their job. They know they won't be fired, and you know it does still happen in some cases. But they are given some resources where they can take time away but that, from yeah, their but, career. But the problem hold is on, that, that hold on, okay, hold on, hold on. if you are trying to climb the corporate ladder and you take two years away from climbing <laughs> that ladder. Mm-hmm. Being taken out of your work environment for a year puts you behind not just in the technical aspects of the job, but it also puts you behind incredibly in the relationships that people are able to make while you're not there, Mm -hmm. the the weak ties between people in the company and how those can form stronger ties, which might put you top of mind if you're there every day for the next position that comes up instead of someone who hasn't been there for eight months or you haven't seen their face. Like there are real concerns here which necessitate that diversity hire where you sometimes have to go and I agree with what you're saying that to sort of balance the playing field and level the playing field, some people unfortunately have to be given an advantage and I'm just going to come out and say what it is. Mm -hmm. Some people need that advantage because they start out in a position where they're disadvantaged. And because that advantage was was specifically given to other, they're not they're they're reversing a wrong, and unfortunately, you have to create a second wrong, a minor second wrong. Well, don't call a don't wrong. call biology a wrong. 
right? Well, it's no, a yeah. real difference. It's just a circumstance that you have to acknowledge and, and no, no, deal with. The, the wrong was that they weren't being hired to begin with because they were women, because they were minorities. Oh, okay, right, right. That was the wrong. The, the, the fact that they got pregnant is not the wrong. It's an unfortunate side. Of, it's a fun, it's fun issue of being a woman that yeah. they have to decide between their career or having a family. And yeah. a lot of them, a lot of women in, in executive positions have foregone children because you're right. Uh, in, a, in a fast moving company like Google, you leave for a year, you come back to almost a completely different company. And, and I've, you're starting I've almost worked, over again. It's I very have, challenging for women to do that. It's a very bad decision. But the fact is, they're, they're, you know, for a long time, men were being are giving an artificial advantage. So the theory, the thought process is, we are going to give an artificial advantage to everybody else instead to balance what men have. But the the problem is, men don't realize they were get, either don't realize or don't want to acknowledge that they've been having an advantage this whole time, and feel now they're being put upon. Despite the fact that they've been getting they've been getting away with murder for long for the, for for centuries, basically. I have I have worked for a small startup company. I spent five years there, and the company when I left was nothing like the company that I joined. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean there was explosive growth while I was there. If someone took one year, took twelve months at any point in the five years that I was there, and left and came back, they would not recognize the company when they came back. Yeah, uh, that's that is unfortunately a fact. And Google, it may seem like it's this giant monolith that's been around forever, but it's still an incredibly young company. Okay. Google hardly Google, I don't think, knows what it's going to be ten years from now. Mm-hmm. And, and to get back to uh, my, my my little comment before, I know a lot of women in the STEM fields. They are routinely uh, talked over by their male colleagues. They are. Their opinions are dismissed off the bat routinely. Oh no, you're wrong. That can't be right. Not having done any research, I mean, they could genuinely be incorrect. But they're being dismissed and being incorrect are two different things. And you know, they're treated as sex objects. I believe um, one professor, I think a year or two ago, was dismissed from his tenure when he publicly stated that women in the lab are just a, are just a distraction because all the men fall in love with them. And that, 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 that's a treat that, you know, they do do that. Unfortunately, uh, they, they're, they are, uh, one thing is they're, they're treated like sex objects. You know, uh, when, when you have a disbalance between men and women in the office, you wind up with a lot of, you know, sexist comments. You know, women being judged on their looks as opposed to their performance. And, you know, men think they're paying them a compliment, but what you're doing is you're disregarding their, their, their work and just basing, basing compliments on their decision, right? You're, uh, so, so the, the women, women in the STEM field have work hard and a lot of them just leave because they, they just get frustrated into quitting. And then, and, and so you get this disparity, you end up with a disparity with fewer people, fewer men staying in the field. And then fewer people ultimately getting uh, the upper level jobs. It, 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 the frustration and the discrimination pushes them out. It's not has nothing to do with the biology and their mental makeup. That's ridiculous because you know they assume to assume all the jobs uh, are, are decided on merit are uh, is 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 a lie because therefore we wouldn't have. Uh, we would not have the old adage it's not what you know it's who you know so given yeah. your close reading of the memo as mm-hmm. a primary source put a cap on it for us was it right that he was fired and why was he fired um, I feel he was fired because he sent a critique of the company to everybody in the world everybody in the company the fact that he was misogynist is not, while I don't agree with it being misogyny uh, the, the, the misogynist tone of the letter, uh, which probably added to it. I think straight up, he wrote a critique of the company and he sent it to every single person in the company. If he, if this was a very crunchy granola uh, letter saying, I don't think Google's really, uh, I think Google is not investing enough in solar panels and he we should be doing more for that. And then send that letter, critique, that, that critique, company critique to every single person in the company. You should also be fired. You don't get you don't get to 
throw that kind of critique across the entire company. The, the, the email all email is not something you use lightly and it's not something you use to, 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 to disseminate any kind of lame harebrained idea. It wasn't it wasn't sent out by email. Okay, it's not email, but it's, it's still with every single person in the company. And that alone like- is a fireable offense. Okay. For disseminating some sort of personal opinion. And the fact that it was discriminatory against women and minorities is, is just even worse. So, uh, for my opinion on this, um, I agree with you that he should have been fired. Um, I come down a little strongly, though, or I come down stronger than you on why, though. He should have been fired and why Google was right to fire him. Um, the memo or manifesto or screed, it was sent out on a internal message board for the company, for the employees. And this message board is precisely to discuss items as they relate to Google, the culture, issues at the company. Um, it's meant as a sort of group think uh, type of forum where employees are encouraged to go on without fear of reprisal and have their voices heard by everyone in the company. So this memo is not new. This memo is months old and it was sitting on the server and it was sent to someone at the newspapers who published it. Oh, okay. And that's where we get this. So this thing has been floating around Google for months. <coughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, but that's no excuse. I still think he should have been fired. He should have been fired the moment he hit send on this. And the reason why James Damore deserves to be fired from Google is because, quite frankly, he is an idiot. Plain and simple. His memo, he freely admits, in the first few points and paragraphs, he freely admits that he thinks the male-female disparity at Google, which I agree with JR on this, it comes down to male-female. This whole, it's got nothing to do with diversity. It's got nothing to do with it's, yeah, it's, not under the it's male-female. It, 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 it quickly falls down to male versus female. So he freely admits that he thinks the male-female disparity at Google is partially based on biology. Negative traits are associated with women, and it's somehow their fault that there are not more women engineers in senior management at Google, despite Google's attempts at diversity hiring. This is one of the first points in the memo. And I repeat at this time, he is an idiot. Yes. A lot of, a lot of his points are fallacies. It's, it's something you would expect to see back in the sixties and the seventies when people were trying to justify being discriminatory towards black people and why, you know, you know, or that, the book that, that came out, the, the, the book that came out, um, the bell curve that uh, found an equivalency or a relationship between race and IQ. Exactly. That that this he, it is as what he, his points in here are as stupid as that bell curve theory sounds to us now, now and it's, it's almost on the same level. Now some of the some of the points are incredibly dumb and divisive. Did he have any good points in the memo? Very little. I don't actually, think there was any. Well, actually, he, I mean, he did have some good points. He did offer some general solutions to increase diversity. But I think those days, they were self-serving, though. The point is, he came down and said, yeah, diversity is good. Now, whether it was lip service or something like that, he went on to say he also wanted discussion. Now, this point, I'm behind him on. He said he wanted discussion on the actual numbers behind Google's hiring diversity program's efficacy. And he called out the harms called by the internal biases of Google management. Now, as a worker bee, all my life, I love that. I love that he called senior management to the carpet. And as a worker bee my whole life, I repeat, James Damore is an idiot. (laughs) Because he called out, he called out his boss, he called out his boss's boss to be accountable for something, which is the diversity hiring programs. He called them out to be accountable to James Damore. And James Damore has no reason to know anything about that. He has no reason 
to be consulted on the diversity hiring policies of Google. He, it almost seems that he's implying, as I said before, that they're just repo- that Google seems to just be putting asses in seats regardless of qualification. Exactly. And that's the most ludicrous thing ever. And and it you, took if, if Google's hiring process is extremely rugged. It, it it's gruesome. There's a lot of work, there's a lot of challenges you have to go through to figure you know even this person who's in second and third place is a fucking genius. You know, to, to say that someone got a pass on the hiring is not true. Google's not going to put a woman who has no experience in, in, in computers and call her an engineer, call her a software engineer, and put her in front of a desk and think that, well, it's okay. She's, as long as she's a woman, that's the only checkbox we have to do. That is completely wrong. All right? It is, you know, th- these women who are being hired are being, are completely, are, are being completely, um, uh, vetted. Yes. Right? And I, I understand now, what you're saying. While, while, you while they may only be looking at women, they still, these women still have to be capable of doing good work. Yes. But we're trying to focus on the memo, right? Okay. So the memo itself took two months to be sent up the food chain and to have the right person look at it, right? Now, if you read commentary of this memo online, which is why I'm glad that JR took us through the memo itself, he took, he went through, he read it. Um, some of the commentary online would have you think that it is much more incendiary than what it actually is. But JR did, I think, did a real good job of taking us through and pointing out the highlights as to the main points, because as I said, it's it goes on forever. It is fairly incendiary. It makes it makes some very blatant, uh, uh, f- fairly negative comments towards women. Um, y- yes, but it, as it's, it's not, it's, it is not a, a level-headed critique. It's very biased against women. As it's, we said, though, there is that there is that underlying subtext, right? But you you give that to a hundred people to read. Right, they're going to have a hundred different interpretations of what he's of what he said. Mm, if, but if, nobody, yeah, no. but but nobody can nobody can disagree with the fact that he's calling out his boss and his boss's boss for something that he has no business knowing about, and the boss thinks much less of your opinion than you think the boss thinks of your opinion. Listen, if 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 I had even in 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 my, in my office. Yeah. If I had a problem with how the president was running things, I'm sure I could. If I wanted, I can, I'm sure I could schedule a meeting with him and ask him my questions directly. And I, and I think I I could say I don't really think this is a great way to do it. I don't. I, I could say I, I could I could disagree with him one on one and probably not be fired as long as I said everything in a respectful manner. You know. But if I were to write that same, even if it was respectful, if I put that same. All those points in the email, and then blasted it across the whole company. I would totally be fired. I would totally be fired because that is not how you engage upper management by 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 yelling it across the entire company. That that that, that, that I would I would be fired regardless of how I worded that letter. True, but don't forget he went on the forum where this type of discussion was encouraged. So I can't I can't fault him okay. for I can't I can't fault him for that. I just fault him for being an idiot, thinking that he could actually do that. Lots of places have suggestion boxes. Lots of places have, you know, if you have an idea, let us know. Lots of places say they want to hear what you have to say. But, but the those boss, suggestion boxes are pretty private. Exactly. The, and the boss is not looking for a problem. The boss is looking for a solution. His little memo there did not offer any solutions. His solutions are basically let conservatives speak their mind. We want to be able to say sexist things and tell. Uh, basically, it's essentially what what he's trying to say. I don't know what what kind of opinions he's trying to. I'd love to know what the opinion. He keeps saying that we get we get penalized for speaking our mind. Oh wow! But what is he trying to say? Is, is he? If it's one thing to say. Listen, we've been working with Susie and she's just not, her code is not up to snuff and she's not very, if the person is, is generally a poor coder, that's fine. If he wants to go up to his boss and say, Susie's a dumb bitch and I think she's on her period, it's that kind of month, clearly it's affecting her work, that is completely unacceptable language and it almost seems like that's what he's trying to say, what, that, that's the language he's been saying at work. 
He gets in trouble for it, and he thinks it's because he's criticizing a woman. Well, meanwhile, he's probably criticizing a woman completely inappropriately. You know, there, there's a way to there's a way to critique someone. If I if someone's dragging their ass and not producing, just because they're a woman or just because they're more right does not mean they get away with it. But you don't go in there and and you 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 have to treat them like a human being. You go, listen, Frank, or listen, Raj. You're laid on. You're, you've been laid on the last three assignments, and you're holding up the project. If you if you miss one more project, we're going to have to start looking at disciplinary action here. And and it, when you say it that way, it's completely neutral. You're treating the person as a as a human being. But if you go into it, I think it's like, well, I know what you well. You know, I don't know how people do things in India, Raj, but around here, we do that. And that's completely unacceptable. And I, I almost feel that that's the kind of language that uh, James feels like he wants to say. You were, very, you were I, very quick with the name Raj. Do we have to edit this in post? No, no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give an example of a bigoted uh, comment. I'm okay. not, I, I'm, I'm not, I, it's a very, that, that was a very racist comment. But I was, it was, it was being done in exa- as an example of how I seem to feel that James wants to conduct his language at work because I don't understand how he, I'd like to know why he is being criticized and why he's being, he doesn't offer examples as to how he's being discriminated. He just seems to say, I can't offer any complaints because I get shot down. Well, James, maybe it's the way you're, maybe it's the language you're using at work and not the actual complaint itself. So the aftermath, and this leads us to our exit question on this topic. Uh, the aftermath is, when the firing was done, the big wigs at Google wanted to have a discussion with the rest of the employees. Uh, they wanted to do sort of a town hall type forum. And many of the employees said they did not feel comfortable because they felt that they could not freely express themselves. Uh, and their opinions on the topic. And unfortunately, there's been no further discussion about this issue at Google. Well, none that we none that we know of, right? And that's where I want to take the exit question. Where does Google go from here? Because the culture at Google is damaged. And culture is a big touchstone at corporations nowadays. Can Google repair this damage? They used to have a culture where they were the hip, cool place to work. You know, you, you take the slide to your desk and your cafeteria food is free. They were the ultimate tech company. Um, but now, employees are no longer sharing their ideas with management. James Damore, unfortunately, is the idiot that said his piece on a work provided forum to say your piece and he was punished for it by being fired. So is Google now a place where everyone is a drone in sector 7G and they're no longer part of a family of, you know, they they call each other Googlers, right? They have their own pet names for themselves. Um, Google is the biggest fish in the tech pond. Is it no better than ExxonMobil? No, I disagree with that. Uh, people like like James. He's sometimes people feel if they if, if the company doesn't completely agree with what they're saying, they're being penalized. You know, if he had if he had gone into 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 his uh, into into his boss and done a one on one saying, "Well, why are we hiring so many women and minorities? What the hell?" You know, and. And then, and then, and then the 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 um, the uh, and his manager gives her a, a clear explanation. You know what? The, the different viewpoints and different uh, diversifying the the office with capable people gives different viewpoints and different opinions. I mean, the, the, you know, you, you don't get this one monoculture of all men or all white men. You know, you get different people who bring different opinions into the care because he because it's possible that. Because the the manager didn't completely agree with him, that suddenly he was wrong. But it's also possible that maybe he's having very open discussions around the water cooler about how 
you know, I wish we couldn't have so many women around here because now I can't make uh, sex, I, I can't tell my favorite jokes around here and someone hears that and they get in trouble for it. And he seems to think that, well, if I'm not co towing the company line, I'm, uh, I'm clearly, uh, I'm, I'm clearly uh, going to get punished for it, which is not true. Hold, hold on. I think, I think you took the example a little bit too far. Um, this action by the management of Google... I think we can agree will have a chilling effect on the relationships between the workers and the management at Google. It was, again, a company sponsored forum to bring these ideas out. And there's more than there's more than one, right? They have they have a whole bunch of ways for staff to talk to each other, right? But would you would would you, if you were working at Google, feel confident and secure to say anything to management. That, yeah, no, that, no, that's, I, that's what I, I'm trying I would, to get. I would. This this paper. Forget is, about forget about this paper. This I'm talking paper is, about this in paper general. Is a, is, a, is a very sexist, complete, very sexist criticism. Yes, but I'm we. Sorry. Yes, but we. But we're we're uh, looking I, at I, the I, overall I think, culture. Don't. So we've gone through the paper, right? I'm talking about. Would you feel comfortable questioning management? At Google, on anything. Um, it depends. I don't. I don't. I mean, the drones don't get to talk to the president directly, and, and no company allows that because simply, a simply, the, the people at the bottom outnumber the president, and if the president had to answer every single person directly, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't get anything done. If Sundar Pichai had to answer every single email everybody at the bottom sent him. He wouldn't get any work done. So A, it becomes a question of of, of numbers. That's did, why there is sub-management. Did Google make it worse by firing the guy? You, um, no, because this, this, this memo was, was ridiculous. The content of this memo justified his firing. On top, on top of my reasons before, this is, un, this is, this is completely unacceptable language. And generalizations, you know, to, to be, as you said, to basically say it is women's fault because their biology and their nature has failed them to to prepare them for techno for the tech field is is ignorant. I I if I had if he had written some sort of memo about how the white man is superior to the black man and that's why they're not in the office, he would be equally fired. And that kind of if you, to say it that way. And, 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 and to then suddenly be surprised that you're being uh, reprimanded is not uh, is, is not simply oh I'm being punished because I don't I don't share the company view I'm being punished because I'm a raging racist and in this case he's being punished because he's a raging sexist and if this is the way he thinks I can only imagine what his office conduct has been if he felt comfortable to write this letter and post in a public forum, his behavior must have been equally on par. And that is what he is, he was, and then, and I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that he, what he feels he's being punished for not towing the company line is because he's been, re, he's been behaving like a a sexist asshole. And that is why he has being, become punished. That's why he's been being punished. And not because he's quote unquote not towing the company line. That's how he wants to simplify it. People can't see your air quotes on the podcast. Sorry, air quotes. Not towing the company line. He's trying to he's trying to spin it like, well, I'm just not acting the way Google wants. And Google is basically saying, stop being a sexist asshole and treat women like he, like a human like human beings. And he's spinning it to, to make it look like he's being victimized by saying it that way. He turns himself into victim. I can only imagine. I, I, I would love to know what James James uh, Demore Demore's conduct in the office was like. It was probably deplorable. Any woman that crossed his path was probably uh, a target of uh, unbelievable, uh, ridiculous comments and wrath. Because he just simply hated that they were there and probably treated them as such, and then was clearly disciplined for that. And now, and, he, and and decides to make himself the victim. Those are some heavy assumptions and allegations. Uh, ba ba based on this paper, I think I think I can make a couple of pretty good assumptions. They are assumptions. 
but I think they're fairly educated assumptions based on how he uh, on his thought process in this uh, on this paper. Um, I was just happy to hear you say that you know that they are assumptions. They are assumptions, but I, I think they're they're assumptions that are consistent with his viewpoints. With the with the uh-huh. uh, twenty page document that we have, yes, it's not exactly a one off Twitter. Uh, 140 character. It, 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 it's clearly representative of, of a long chain of behavior. You know, I, I almost feel like he was probably going to be fired eventually anyway. He was going to say the wrong thing to a woman or to a minority and he was going to get fired for, for some sort of a slur in the office. He was going to let it slip. Because Maybe he saw the writing on the wall and this is his way of jumping before he got pushed. Possible. Go out in a, go out in a blaze of glory, right? It's possible, yeah. And on that note, we come to the end of episode three of Crew Roundtable Bites. We encourage everyone to go to the website, crewroundtable.com. Subscribe, 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 and share the show with your friends and enemies. Uh, We also have a Twitter, at Crew Roundtable, run by the one and only JR. Follow that. Incredibly entertaining. And we will see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye.